contains coarse language and adult things. Viewer discretion is advised. So, welcome to the Escap Podcast, Hope of uh, Hope of Escap Nation. Today's sponsor is Drywall. And thank you, Drywall. On, Praise be Drywall. Yes, on the the podcast we have Bobby. Hi, oh, Bobby. I'm Bobby. She, she demon. I'm she demon. I'm. You with, can call, people call me Olivia sometimes. I don't know why. With Olivia. I love you. <laughs> love you too, buddy. She dash demon. That's Olivia. my name. She dash comma demon. Yes. And today's topic for the podcast is um, alternate universe escap theory. Would escap be recorded with a microphone? I thought the topic was you. Oh me okay for first of all uh why did you get me on the podcast why <laughs> me well you are one of the current who, who the fuck are you you're one right. of the who are, who are you? you who are you no talent who are you me me my name bulk bogan uh me name actual bjorn me live in what are Canada. your pronouns bjorn he him great and I live in <laughs> wrong answer. I live no, just kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry, shall I leave? No, I'm joking. Keep going. You're good. Uh, You're good. It's a little goofy goof. I'm feeling a lot of hostility towards cis right now. <laughs> towards cysts. Cis. Towards cysts. Cis. Towards cysts. That's mm. crazy. Anyway, what country are you from? I'm in Canada. I live in Mississauga. My address is... Okay, so I sure hope we, we're going to cut that out. Um, but great answer. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. And uh, I also go by... DJ Sleepy Hooves. DJ Sleepy Hooves. DJ in the house. DJ Sloppy I'm Hooves. Honored to, I'm honored to be in your presence, really. DJ Sleepy DJ, Hooves. DJ, really. what was the last? DJ uh, Suck and Fuck. DJ Markiplier. Fuck You Die DJ, is one of them, right? Or something like which, that. Which one? It's like Fuck You Die or something. Oh, Kill You Dead Bitch? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> That's my Halloween name. By the way, welcome DJ to the Kill ha- You Dead Bitch. <laughs> welcome to the Halloween cast. It's the, the Halloween, Halloween episode, episode of this Escap podcast. If uh, you got a pumpkin, now we need all? to acknowledge the most terrifying possibility of all. What if other animals is good actually? Why did you name the podcast this if you don't like the song? Well, I didn't name it, but uh, I do think it's a good name actually, and uh, it's also, it's. Yeah, it's not my podcast, but I do think there's really good stuff about all, even the even the Escap songs that people don't like. Do you own any share of the podcast? Like, who owns most of it? Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think Adia is about um, Adia is our CFO right now. Um, this is true. The yeah, we we do have another board meeting coming up in the next um quarter. So I think uh, depending on depending on the numbers that she's running, um. We might we might see some mix ups going on, but you know, I think uh, mm. I think we're probably pretty steady at the moment. Mm. Do you have? Do, do I get any stocks by being on the podcast? No. Oh. No, you get a sticker on Discord. This is true, though. There's there's okay. a sticker that says if you were on the podcast. That's literally true. Who listens to this podcast? Um. Why don't? The listeners tell us who listens to the podcast in the comments of this episode. Yeah. You know, there, and then we can know the answer. There have been quite a few people that have joined the Captive Unicorns Discord server that have said, "Hey, I joined because I listen to the podcast." And it's like each podcast episode gets no more than like what, like a hundred views or a couple hundred views. 
it's like i it's it's good that it's a gateway but it, it is like wow like who are you people that yeah just it's find like this cool. and then find everything else through this like it's cool but it's like whoa well, if you clicked on the podcast because you saw episode 37, Bulk Bogan, a.k.a. DJ Suck and Fuck, and you really wanted to hear what I had to say, well, I'm, I'm glad you joined. I'm here to talk to you and tell you all about my life with uh, with SCAP. And we, there's a little function on YouTube that if you don't like the 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 way that my voice sounds, you know, you can like... We have it on separate audio tracks on YouTube that you can click click on my track and use the equalizer to find the frequencies that you like. And let me know which were your favorite frequencies down below. I hope you do a um a goofy up and down with my with my pitch or whatever. So it's like hi, hi, I'm Olivia. I thought you were a she demon. I'm she demon. I'm Olivia. Who can really know what the true answer is? So, Bulk. Hey. Bulk. I need to hey. know. Bobby, I love you. I love you, Bulk. I need to know I, something. I, 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 what can I say? I miss you so much. I wanna <laughs> find. I wanna find you. <laughs> Are we going to see each Do other? Do you still have my fest? underwear? I, I don't wait was it your oh yeah <laughs> yeah I, I have your is there some Colton Con lore going on <laughs> here that, Colton I was Con. at I was at Colton Con and I didn't hear about this your, your maybe I don't want to hear about this maybe this is not podcast material <laughs> it's still in my basement just sitting there what are you gonna do with it well right now it's just I guess I could pick it up can. when I it's go part there. of the altar <laughs> Yeah, I guess I could wash it, but I don't know. I've just been letting it kind of sit around. I think it's funny. She like if it lights just, a candle next to it every night. If you age the smell and see what happens. Jesus Christ! All right, next question. I am wait, vetoing wait, I mean, this even question. Get to the question. When you get to the quiz, <laughs> come on, man, come so, on, baby. So, so I need to know how you discovered Escap Bulk. Please tell me. <sighs> Good one. Paint by the numbers, right here. Okay, so Escap. Uh, do I even remember? It's probably just, yeah, it was probably just like YouTube. Yeah, just like 2013 Pony Phase going like on YouTube. It's probably through like clicking through videos and then eventually getting to music and then eventually getting to like Pinkie Pie Swear and then getting to, I don't remember which first song I watched. You know, it might have been the Pinkie Pie Swear remix. Just makes sense. But... The uh, the first songs I listened to were the standard model, of course, and I don't know if there's if it was the first one, but like it, to this day in history, maybe like from the very first day till now, has one hundred percent always been my favorite song, and like you know, depending on how you feel, you can kind of go back and forth on that from time to time, but like. Even if something else like comes up and is almost as good, it's still like ninety nine percent versus a hundred percent in like how I feel towards that song. I don't know. Like I, yeah. I remember song it in on the uh, during the break at high school, like grade nine or ten, and I was in the computer lab doing lunch. I was just watching YouTube, and then I saw it, and I was like, "This is fucking insane." And, and I sent it to a couple people that I knew and I was like, this is fucking crazy. And they were just like, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and from that day I knew that like, oh, this is, <laughs> this, this, this is the, the niche nobody is going to like understand fully. <laughs> yeah. I uh, what a great answer. experienced yeah. the same thing, just showing it to people and they're like, I don't, it's cool. And, that's and then it took, that's it, awesome. it took until like seven years later to find the people who understand. <laughs> yeah. I think in history, maybe is a pretty a, a relatively, I don't know if I've actually heard that as a favorite bef before. And I, lo I love it as an answer. It's really, really excellent. Super cool. It's a really, really good song. I, I, don't, I just think that like it's a banger, I guess that people like different things in music. And for me, this has like just every single thing. 
I could possibly want in like something that uh, is like a perfect emotional experience. And like, there's so many things to think about it, uh, about when I'm like listening to the song. And every time I listen to it, I hear something new, like, especially if you like turn music to different volumes, sometimes you just hear like sounds that were mixed um, in, in a weird way. And it's like, very bizarre. I don't know, like, I guess if you turn music up too loud, like certain parts just overtake everything. But like, one time I was just listening to it on my earbuds at like low volume or something. And I was like, what the why is this little sound coming out of this <laughs> end? And like, the the original song, which I didn't even hear until years later, like the pony piano song is like brilliant. But I guess that there's just something about the way it's used in in history, maybe that is just like life changing, just breaks you down on an emotional level. It's got like this crazy, um, what is it like? What do they call um in movies like a plot arc or something? Was it hmm. narrative? Na- narrative? Yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's like plot structure, I guess, or like, you know, how it, like moving up and down in intensity. Arc? Yeah, arc. I'm a musician. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, like, I've always tried to think about that and use it in my own music, potentially, or like anything, storytelling, any any art, as like this crazy, like, moving from one scene to another each one has its own feel and then like it has it almost has like multiple climaxes but then like the one at the end is like every single time i hear it i'm like this is the only thing that i would define as like masterpiece (laughs) in in in, in just moving in such a crazy way that we the word i always use is like recontextualization of of like clips to kind of form its narrative of this like story going on, you know, this story going on of uh, the the character going through these motions and like the absolute like glory at the end, <laughs> the the like the payoff that is just like, oh, she fucking did it, oh, and like <laughs> so it gets me every single time, and unlike. Some of the other songs, I think that this one is really a standout as well because my second favorite song might be um, Beautiful Heart. But that one is almost a little bit easier, I I would say, to make musically. That would be an easier song to make because it uses chops from a really good song to begin with, like an actual song. But there's... There wasn't a Rainbow Dash song, like purely Rainbow Dash, until the Tank song, whatever. And I don't think, like, season two... I don't know if season two was out when Standard Model was made. Uh, I don't remember. I don't know. So, like, they don't have the song that would eventually be used in other animals with Rainbow Dash singing. But, so there's, like, I very, believe that is correct. Yeah. There's... That's worth there's very little like resource to use to make that song like especially in just so what like what was there at the time there was like rainbow dash in the intro and at the gala song and then everything else in that song is just like chops from just speaking in the show so i always thought that was like really special that was crazy that somebody could take things that because I think it's relatively easy to make songs using chops that are already musical. Like when I did chops in Slop Nation, super easy because (laughs) it's already a song, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Can you talk a a bit about like your own music and like what you've been doing as DJ Sleepy Hoops and stuff and like when you started and stuff? Because I know you're talking a bit about it, like as like, you know, in history, maybe it's something you take inspiration from. For those who are unaware, I'm a musical genius. Uh, don't look up musical genius with a K. That's a different thing. Um, I started making music because of Bobby getting me to do um, You're Gonna Want to Bleep This Car. <laughs> and 
we did the like the cons cat rap or something. Well, it was originally the cons cat, and then it turned into uh, busty bars. Are uh, you gonna want to bleep this? Which originally was dust. <laughs> and you don't have to bleep any of those. <laughs> Actually, was that before or after SCD Unicorns one? I have no clue. Oh my god. Um, I really don't remember. <laughs> it's all or fuzzy. It, do you remember if it was after or before Acid Unicorns 2? Probably before. Quarantine. It's all the blur. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really... I have no clue. Yeah, I'm trying to like trace back the exact starts. Because the only time I used any like musical software or something like before that was... Um, I had used FL Studio like 16, installed my laptop to make a short, tiny loop to use in like a short film. There was just like an alien song. It was like... <laughs> oh, uh, I, that's my favorite Apex Twin song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Banger. I also really like... Classic. <laughs> classic. Oh, I, I love that one, too. <laughs> that whole album is just full of fucking silly slappers you're gonna want to bleep that out so you make songs <laughs> <laughs> you... <laughs> right but uh like that was each song that i've been doing since then uh has kind of just been a way to try out something new because like i don't really know how to go about doing any of this like i I've watched videos and tutorials and all this stuff before, but none of it really, like, ever seems to do that much for me. <laughs> like, the most helpful things I had were just, like, when Rory Toasterless uh, showed me, like, the theory on, like, making chords while we were at camp. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's how it is? Okay. <laughs> like... There's not there's no thing there's nothing that really tells you something like oh making um this like note in the middle here moving it closer towards like uh the lower note rather than the high note can make it sound like like that's a a minor chord or something I was like I don't like do do I have to watch like 80 minutes of tutorials on music theory or learning piano just to get that from it because I think that's all I really need. I don't want to make anything like beyond that, <laughs> at least at this point. Like, I mean, he he tried to explain chords and stuff to me before, and he did a really good job at it. It's just like for me, I can't ever like you know really take it in yeah. and like apply it. But I think like what you did for for Slop Nation was so crazy because like the thing you did before that was like bedtime story where you're sampling like this old like tape this cassette tape like from the 80s like the uh, mlp cassette tape and and you're like i don't know just doing mostly chops and stuff But I don't know. You, you when you finally started doing chords, I was like, "Oh my god, this sounds like better than most of like songs I made." Because I don't, <laughs> I feel like I just you already have like a better understanding of how to do chord progressions than me. <laughs> like th that that shit is just so foreign to me. I don't know. Well, um, let me get to some of, some of these instances of the the song creation. I guess uh, I just want to like start from the very root, like. Uh, how, like, everything I did, yeah, it was just a little tiny experiment. And usually it was just, like, since if you can't make something genuinely good, you know, you start with just, like, shit that's compensating with being, like, um, gimmical, like, gimmicky or novelty or, like, funny, you know, which has its <laughs> own merits. But, I mean, nobody's going to be, like, listening to it for decades to come unless it's, I don't know, <laughs> unless it's... Like, fuck Georgia or something, you know. It's just <laughs> it's that good. Uh, yeah. But, um, 
yeah, eventually, like, you meet new people and talk to them and see how they make music and just, like, spend more time and time and time on it. Um, but I think the most helpful re le thing is literally just, like, listening to every music ever made because, <laughs> like, that's... I, I don't usually get too many ideas by just, like, screwing around with stuff in a DAW. A lot of my ideas are just, like, hearing new music taking elements from them and like mashing them up in my head as I'm like walking down the street or, or like, <laughs> I only talked to Toasterless about this. Mo a lot of drum patterns are inspired from, uh, doing like freestyle drums on my teeth because <laughs> what? Uh, what? like, okay. So this is a thing I've done for years and it probably is bad for my teeth, but I don't do it as much. I think it's uh, my musical outlet has probably stopped me from doing it as much now that I can just like make music. I don't know if people do, comment down below if you do this at home. So like, um, I clack my teeth together in a way that like each tooth is like a MIDI drum. <laughs> like uh, if I if I clack my, my right top and bottom uh, two front teeth together, that's a kick and if I clack my left uh, side of my mouth together, that's a snare. And can we uh, can we get a what? live performance? I mean, uh, you're not going to hear the microphone. It. You're going to hear it in Discord, but I'll, I'll stick my mouth up yeah, to the yeah, mic just... for the recording. Wow! And incredible, stunning. Like, I don't remember like, and usually I just do that because like I don't think there's really too much more important than a kick and a snare really like everything else is just syrup you know what about the hi-hat i don't i mean the hi-hat is like some tooth in between i don't remember and i like do <laughs> i do like double bass kicks and and drum rolls like tom rolls on tom fills by like moving my teeth like horizontally across each other like oh my god I just did it on the mic as good. Again. Yeah, so I used to do drum and bass on my teeth while I was, like, walking around at work. I mean, I kind of do, like, you know, I'll do, like, rhythms or whatever with my teeth, but I don't have it, like, fucking MIDI mapped out like you do. Like, that's insane. That's wild. <laughs> and, you know, or I'm just, like, slapping my, my thighs together or, like, slapping my chest um uh, most of the shit that I do freestyle, like, on my teeth or chest is, like, I would want to make that into a music, but I can't, like, transcribe it easily. Like, I'll do on my chest on the mic, like... You can't hear that, but uh, it's, like... I'm hearing it in my mind, and it's beautiful. <laughs> it's, just like, it's just, like, shit that goes a million miles an hour and changes time signature every bar or something. So anyways, um, yeah, I think that all of it was just kind of like, I, I hate to say it, but like it's easy, it's really easy to do something like beats and and uh, like rap rather than singing, especially if you don't really have like a singing voice. So that's where everybody just fits the mold of that. Like what, especially in our like little community, it's just like, it's really easy to show somebody how to do that to just like slap samples down and it doesn't take too much for like a piano roll or anything so it kind of just fell into that but um i just like love chops i guess is it what what ways can you describe anything like glitch glitch uh are you asking like what genre you make yeah, or, it, like, or or what it's what the style is called. I think chops is very accurate. Like, yeah, I like I like it. It. I like to make gross beat music. <laughs> yeah, do you I, do you actually use gross beat on the songs, or are really you doing not it in the too playlist? Much. It's just like something okay. that um, is really easy to do. I try not to do a lot because I have never made like a preset in gross beat. I don't care to do that because I'd rather just do it like in the playlist and make my own chops 
yeah. if I if I keep using the same presets, unless it's like for something easy and quick, it's just gonna sound like everything else. Because the second that you do something that's like pre-made, then everybody does it, and you sound like everybody else. Like, <laughs> yeah, and even, doing it in the playlist just lets you add like so much variation to things, and just like you can do it completely free form. It's like any time that anybody uses gross beat in a song, everybody can just point out so easily like that is <laughs> TJ gross beat. <laughs> like, like <laughs> they're the same presets like like simple <laughs> number five, you know. <laughs> There's like a song in like this this like YouTube animation that I haven't seen called like Ina or something, and like the entire song is it, the like literally the entire song, drums and everything are put through a gross beat preset. <laughs> like the entire song. Like it sounds sounds fine. But it's like, <laughs> you can totally tell, you know? <laughs> Yeah, even like I felt, even though it was something that was like last minute trying to make music for a, like a throwaway live event on Renegade stage, mm -hmm. and um, like at Everfree Northwest, dirty. Right? Yeah, like I felt a little dirty putting the gross beat on that uh, on the Horse Ripper song. I was like, ooh, you know, it sounds good, but it's gross beat, <laughs> like. <laughs> I mean, what you need to do is just, like, modify a gross beat preset just a little bit. Yeah. And then it's, like, <laughs> you know. The only <laughs> thing is yours. gross beat is really good for me still as, like, record scratches because I yeah. don't know what easy ways to make record scratches without it. I don't know how to do it in FL. There's probably some VSTs that will do it, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I've looked it up. I think it was too advanced for me at that point. But, you know, I... Uh, so I try so like to try and aspire like beyond this kind of stuff and make something um more like impactful because that's what I felt after realizing that like everybody around me in my group is like making this stuff that I, is like amazing to listen to and you know has this like genuine impact and everybody actually gets it you know like without having people who actually get it or you know they can make their own music as well or you can collaborate with them or like they have something actually interesting to say about what you're gonna make you know mm -hmm. um i've never been the type who just makes their own art you know and then doesn't just makes it purely for themselves you know <laughs> it's like i don't think that's like uh a, a very common thing I think that yeah. most people make things so that they can use them as like a medium to express themselves to other people you know so it really helps to have people who are going to get that when you do that you know right and so like yeah like hearing shit like the first time I heard like uh both of us, will, someday both of us will meet, you know, magic makes it all complete, something like that. You're like, oh, the scene is still popping, you know, <laughs> it can be the new <laughs> S gap. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we just have to mention if there are people that are listening to this that don't understand, like, you know, like me, go to go to the captive unicorn server on discord because that's where you can learn how to make <laughs> music and you'll you have a community of people that will listen to your stuff and will will fuck with it if it's you yeah know. come to see you and come to uh busties the the adjacent <laughs> server you can come to busties if you'd like but yeah you can come to busties if you like but <laughs> if you don't like it then you can go to Duskar and you can have a good time oh my god what are you saying? Heck, like, guys, it is me, Bulk Bulkin, back on the beat, and I'm here to say today that we are going to go to school and learn a lot of stuff. Number one thing we're going to learn is subdivision. Would you like to talk? I'm so to excited you like to, to learn about long division. Long division is actually literally the worst thing I'm I, I'm at. Like the thing I'm worst at in math. I never learned like the proper way to do it. So I just use a calculator. 
you know, you know, I'm I'm good with long division, but I never really got square roots that well. There's no joke here. I just wanted to say that. Welcome to the official math podcast. So square roots by hand, I mean. Volk. Do you like Bogan. my tangents? <laughs> How, yes. How do you pronounce um Escap? When you have so great the word so great and powerful <laughs> and you wanna you wanna shorten it to four letters how do you pronounce what is the uh, right way to do that escap. what is the canon way that is definitely right let's go let's hear it escap is the, i mean oh i mean i don't want to influence your answer but you know how do you um soul grab crew that is not how you pronounce it soul grab that is is this is this clip that i cut out of uh, Scat, uh scatman john scatman world correct is that right? Yeah, it's like skip. He's like scap. That's a that's Scorp. valid. I think I think scap is valid. Scap, but escap is definitely just like you know uh, the way to go. There's no e in so grand powerful though. No, no, not so gap though. So gap is definitely so gap is not. I pronounce it. If you say <laughs> thigh gap. Thigh gap. I Ooh, pronounce it one. wage gap. Is there a is there a y in there? <laughs> What do you think? So, Dave, Mr. David Escap Real would think about the wage gap if he was still alive today. God, Josh, bless his soul. Are you asking me? I'm asking the viewers. The viewers. Please comment in the, in the comments. <laughs> We've exhausted all other conversations pertaining to Escap in current year. Please. Please what is your what least you favorite? What is your least week. favorite Escap song? I yeah, you said your faves is in don't history, know. Maybe. Like literally, whenever I see discourse in VC or people talking in the general or in the community, whatever, about like songs that they don't like or have problems with or little issues, I literally like don't see any of it. And when somebody brings it up and like talks about it, I'm just like I don't get it um i just don't think that any of the music has stuff that was like a mistake or didn't have its own place you know so hmm, like if i could uh, if answer. i could say one not even a whole song but one song that like okay i can think of two songs that have just parts that like i'm like <laughs> they need to be improved <laughs> um is in indelible ink when they have the two crazy harmonies going on um i think that if it was mixed better maybe i could hear what's going on but in what its part state, is the two crazy harmonies Can near you... the near the end right before like the last big chord uh you have like escapes like saying like these um like freestyle poetry shit and then um the other pal tropics and meridians yeah yeah no not that part oh no um wait isn't it silence saying the stuff where he's like yeah any change yeah blah, blah. anything that you could yeah. have you could buy a toy anyone any boy <laughs> <laughs> yeah that part is like any single time i listen to it i cannot hear what either of them are saying if i focus on one of them i can't even hear like I can hear like two words. The other part I would change is in the Circuit Fry song. The uh, I really fucking like Morning Ann. Yeah, bump with the flow in that song, in the like the crazy like rap like. So S G A P is a treat. Fuck with me. Um, <laughs> but then. <laughs> It's like it goes into the part where it's like the coffee was brewing and all the young girls were eating snails. And <laughs> I'm like, okay, this song needs to end now. I haven't listened to that song enough to even know what parts you're talking about. Really? No, I listened to I've heard every song, even the little well, the little tidbits, like at least twenty times. I've heard like most of them a ton, right? But you know, you go through the first or second listen through everything, and and you just you can know which ones are ones that you're not gonna return to. That's all I'm gonna say. I would, 
I specific. This is like a specific artist that I will go back and listen to all of the like um, the, you know the what there's a word for like stuff in albums you know that isn't like B sides B sides yeah, yeah. Um, stuff that because I think every little piece is just like has its own crazy like interesting aspect to it more than most music like something that makes me want to listen to it more than like the hits from another album yeah that's a really good answer and i think i totally agree like even i mean like i was saying in the beginning like even songs that i don't particularly love or whatever like they have great parts to them you know like i don't know like um uh, I don't know if I really want to give examples because I'm a host of this podcast and I'm not probably supposed to do that kind of thing. But like, I definitely do completely feel that way that like, you know, every, every single song has so much amazing stuff to it, even if it also has some stuff that doesn't hit as well. I don't know. I feel like um, some of the collabs in particular, like, you know, there's not enough escape in them for for Not me to latch on to them well I yeah think it's that, like most of the other person and like uh, escap only is in there for a bit of it good. i think yeah i think really good sometimes like i don't know if, but like, we i, I think I you mean, always have these conniptions about these things you know because like <laughs> i i just like music i just like to listen to music I, and like yeah sure maybe if there was a a, a some a, like a form of a compressor that you could put on quality then <laughs> that could be applied but i think that all of it's like interesting to listen to at least and if something sounds like dissonant or like weird or off key in a way that seems ugly at first when i listen to it enough times i'm like damn this is kind of crazy now i kind of see what I, what's going on with it uh like i told you that <laughs> I think that Cannibal Corpse sucks. <laughs> but then I was listening again? to an album today and I was like, damn, this actually kind of goes crazy. <laughs> I just I don't know. You, have to listen to it more. You're right. I guess I do have conniptions about these things because I, 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 I guess I just feel differently. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm picky <laughs> about music in a very specific way. I like, I like music that is trying I don't often like music that feels like it's not trying. So like pop music is just like play by the numbers shit. There's rare instances where it actually is like actually makes me go bonko, you know, go crazy. I think there's a lot of great pop music, though, that's like yeah. trying and is is, you know, well I mean, I mean, like, if you listen intriguing. to shit on the radio, I think that ninety percent of it is just like a okay. Well, pop music is different from popular music, yeah. and I, I feel like we're maybe we're maybe uh, confabulating let me, those let me two say terms a little bit radio here. Radio music. Let me say radio music. Yeah, like on the pop radio. Yeah, uh, top radio. forty. Yeah, most yeah. of it is like a flat rate for me. Like my heartbeat is not accelerating at all. You know, mm -hmm. my my fingers are not twitching. I am just like I'm not even living right now. It's just it's like am I even listening to music? It feels like I'm not. <laughs> I might as well be listening to like brown noise. While I think there are good pop songs, like I totally know the feeling that you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. And that's not to say that like that just means like um like pop music in the sense of it's like Carly Rae Jepsen or something like she makes good music. I'm talking about like like old, yeah, don't old, be dissing my girl, Carly. Old boomer, <laughs> like rock. A lot of that is just nonsense. Like there's good yeah, and bad in that. it, and most people just like all of it. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like people, if you if you like start singing radio lanterns or no patio lanterns, I'm gonna I'm a I'm a I'm a head out. Well, I won't be doing that. Because we have more podcasts to get through. Question number three: How many teeth? All of them, <laughs> except for the. It's wisdoms. actually what's your favorite donut? Oh, you know the answer to that. One. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Wait, I think, you know what? Technically, this is a donut at Tim Hortons. The apple fritters at Tim Hortons. Hmm. Oh, I love apple fritters. But here, okay, here's the distinction. Like, um, there's fake apple fritters and real apple fritters. I've had an apple, real apple fritter, and that is better than the Tim Hortons one, but it has to be classified under donut. So the Tim Hortons apple fritter is good. Like I think it's, yeah, it's a donut to me. It's a donut in my heart. It's made of the same stuff as a donut, right? My heart is full Dough of donuts. And nut. My heart is full of donuts, and I need to get a, a little little uh, coronary bypass surgery. <laughs> you know, not many people know this. We're all in the hospital right now for eating like copious amounts of Yeah, we just had like bang. way too many donuts before this, and this is a live recorded podcast, and I just got coronary bypass surgery. Yeah. I've got a gray finger right now from all that blood they sucked out of my body. <laughs> um, Question number seven. So, yeah, Bul- Bulk's finger gave me up the blood transfer. It was a crazy world that two S gappers have the same like A V positive. All, here's blood. the thing about S gappers. All S gappers have the same blood type. That's true. The music has <laughs> microtonal frequencies that freak out your blood. <laughs> so, Bjorn. Can you bald, call me that? Sleepy hooves. I need to know if you have any any memories that stand out to you that are associated with SCAP or listening to yes. SCAP. Yes, many, the many, 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 many. So if you want to rattle those off. Please so, do. the the one that's most obvious to you probably is when we've listened to it at the same time, you know. Group listenings to SCAP are always crazy because you can see people's live reactions. You can see that the tears, the the laughter, the smiles, the bl- the blood, the... Are you talking about the... This is after Winnie or... Um, multiple times. One of them. Because, like, I bring that up because toasterless told me the other day and he showed me like just a little bit like he recorded he didn't mean to but he, with his filled recorder he recorded the entirety of us listening to all of the sand yeah yeah I, I i know that oh so you do know that yeah like yeah. that's just that's just on his hard drive that's like sacred that's funny audio standard model commentary yeah we're we're like singing along to it and you're like you go to the you go to the escap menu and and you click um fan commentary and then it plays that <laughs> when, you, when, you, that, when you launch the game in that recording you're literally doing like the body drumming that you were talking about earlier like you're just like playing the drums on yourself to the songs it's 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 great <laughs> but please well, colton's doing his pitch perfect chops the, he knows like 75 <laughs> percent of the chops <laughs> that if, if colton like he says this about himself, and after working with him for a bit, like I, I kind of see where it is. Like he, I guess, isn't like exactly the most, um, like able to to create stuff by himself. He is like such a good performer of anything, like singing and music. Like Colton, can, being for people that don't know, server member. Of the Captive Viewer Records Discord server and host of Colton Con, the yearly <laughs> open meetup for server members. Million yeah. dollar Playboy philanthropist <laughs> <laughs> with a big fucking head. No, I'm kidding. His head's and a boy. kind soul. Average sized head. Average head. He's a good boy. Beautiful set of like hair. Boy. Pearly white chompers on him. <laughs> he has some nice teeth. Yeah. I have noticed Lots that. Lots of money in his pockets, walking around <laughs> like he owns the place. Yeah, and he always has cargo shorts on. Just oh always. yeah, he has in also wearing. Weather. He's always wearing nice button shirts. Mm-hmm. They're all, they're so nice. They're so crisp. They are nice. Yeah, he's he's so nice. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> memories, I don't know. We just thought memories, you were saying yeah, he did some shit. Um, yeah, like the live ones. Like I always remember, there's something like important about like seeing like somebody going like oh that's that's crazy and like or like or like specifically a standout moment where we were listening in history maybe and you were like oh that's the best shit ever i'm like 
Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, finally, somebody gets it. Like, the, yeah, the breakdown. Um, and, or when we were at Trotcon Twenty One in in One Twenty Five, infamous One Twenty Five room, oh One Twenty Five. I've 125 burned into my nightmares. That was such a tragedy. That I don't know what I was doing. And you guys were listening to the standard model while I was out of the room. Uh, yeah. I came back for <laughs> S2. Had it on. Yeah, you poor thing. I'm so sorry that happened. And then I missed, like, Colton hearing Dashy for the first time. <laughs> we should have, like, made well, it more of Most a people thing. did, because it was, like, in the car, yeah. right? Yeah. He yeah. did cry. I wasn't there. But he did cry, which is a mood because Dashi is a really cry to it song. Yeah, this is a little tangent. I think that Dashi in particular is one of the most insane songs I've ever heard. It is like the second half specifically, um, both both the instrumentation and the the vocals. I think literally the lyrics in that song are the most like beautiful poetic. Uh, the earth is round. Um, pretty boring. Um, the Earth is actually a chromosome. No, I think that in the second half of that, the lyrics are like the most beautiful, like romantic, poetic words I've ever heard, and like I still haven't heard anything that tops that. I just and I if you slow that song down, like if you vaporwave it it's it's one of those songs where literally every single note is almost perfect so like hearing each note at like a quarter of the speed is still like worth listening to a song that long it's just that good uh, dashi slash hearth swarming eve yeah. slowed to perfection with reverb and mc boing i got my mm. dashi vinyl in the other day it's pretty cool. Uh, wish I, me too. I wish I had a record It's a player. controversial. I think the vinyl can suck my ass farts. <laughs> Why? I think vinyl sucks. End of... Oh, uh, that's a mean thing to say. Like but, in general um, or like vinyl? Yeah. I'm, I'm just kind of... I am. Okay, but what about the music medium? The the, music, I think that's what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, bo- both. Like, uh, oh, I thought you were doing a joke about the pony. No, I was doing no, a joke about no. the pony. No, I love ponies. The <laughs> the medium itself, like the like the actual specifications of it, I think that people have like um, created this like bias where they look up exactly what they want to hear, and they like find like studies and shit like saying that vinyl has like the clearer quality than like than like digital which doesn't even make sense because it's like limited to grooves that are a certain size and like people try to convince themselves that like it's got some like magical quality to it because they i don't know they want to have like live in this world but i just don't see it at all (laughs) Yeah, I totally, I think that's totally fair. Like, I mean, I think the argument extends to a lot of like other audiophile stuff too. Like the ability for people to like differentiate. I mean, maybe it's not, it maybe it's a little bit apples and oranges, but like the ability for people to differentiate like flack or whatever yeah. is like somewhat debated. And I kind of don't really think I believe anybody who can tell. I did watch a video that said, there's this one Radiohead song where if you listen to the MP3 on 192 kilobytes per second, there's this one hi hat that sounds junky, mm. and I did actually hear the difference. But like, that's like really edge casey stuff, you know. And like, you're not the far majority of your listening is like not gonna have any difference whatsoever, especially given that like MP3s are rarely as low as 192 kilobytes per second. Yeah. You know? um, and like audio technology has just gotten to a really good point where like that difference doesn't matter. And I think that's a totally valid point. Um, but I also think that um, there's somewhat of a romance to vinyl, maybe, I mean, physical media in general, just like the idea that you, you know, you have this little ritual you have to do before you listen to your music where you take it out of the sleeve, you put it on the thing all the time. You, you see the album art and you like, you know, you interact with it. And like there's, you have to deal with a little booklet or whatever. Maybe you're sitting there looking at the booklet while listening to it. 
and it takes attention you know you have to like flip it and then you like put it away afterwards and stuff um as whereas it's like way easier to just throw on a youtube video and there's no there's no um uh interactivity to it there's it's not tactile vinyl is tactile and i I think that's a pretty attractive thing about it for me yeah i another fact is just i'm kind of just like anti media pilled like i just and and like uh more of the i don't want to have stuff lying around that i don't like appreciate or use so i like sold all these like video games hard copies i used to have like i had a collection and I sold all of these vinyls because... Bulk Bogan on the Conmarie method? I literally just never use them because I don't have time. Like, anything that I have, I just listen to it on my phone when I'm, like, biking. So, <laughs> like, that's the Sound Bandit CD. I, uh, I bought it from you, Bobby, and then I put it in <laughs> my computer and ripped it and put it on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, I'm I not going to sit down at my computer. It's the only <laughs> CD player I have. to <laughs> Listen to it exclusively there. You could have downloaded it off of SoulSeek from Silver's Rip of the CD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. What a good friend. <laughs> Just pirating your music for you. Mm. I yeah. want to continue with the escape moments. Like, uh, yeah, like Please listening do. to... What's it called? Uh listening to like s2 and other songs at trotcon 21 was crazy because that's the first like live interactive in person uh escape meetup i've been to and like listening of it and like the vibes were just insane everybody's just like it's this part everybody knew exactly which part and they're like we're doing trying attempting to do the chops or whatever you know and like <laughs> when the the which one is the luna s2 song is it like e38 or e40 or something e30, e30? i was from four gore like like it's like it gets to the part and i go yeah that's in uh my vlog right Snapchat. Like, yeah yeah great moment so those are pretty obvious, like, crazy moments with people. But moments to myself, um, a lot of them are really old because, like, I used to listen to it. Most of my SCAP listening was from, like, 2014 to 2016 or 17, I think. And then after that, it had to slow down a lot because, like, listen to it way too much. And then depreciates the value uh like which is a, just the worst feeling ever when you hear something and you're like that wasn't as good as that didn't give me the same feeling that i felt like hearing it the fifth time or something you know oh uh, but that's why i find escap's music so special is because like it, the value never really like depreciates on it i feel like for me yeah i feel the same way i've i've listened to i probably listened to the standard model like um probably like 500 times or something i've listened years. to it a ton of times like i've i've so many times just like listened to everything on the website and just listen to like you know yeah totally TSM just, or S2. i i would never yeah. listen to it casually i think that especially for me like as, who i've listened to every single song so many times that is i would never listen to it just like in the background that for some reason is just kind of seems like a thing to not do. That's just like a a weird um, what what you say? Uh, what when that, I don't I don't know. It's just like when like we were playing Tower Unite and somebody put this S two song on in bowling and I had to turn the volume off. I'm like I don't want to experience this while I'm bowling. <laughs> So that's you really, totally, that's, yeah, I totally get you. You know, I, I totally see why somebody would, would want to do that. You that save your listens and you, you, you hold yeah. it on. This, I, I, I really, this special. I really have to like I mean, pay a lot of attention to, to music. If I don't, then, and I miss something like the, while well, I'm doing like 
the potential of that experience, I get really upset. Like any time that I've listened to something like A Beautiful Heart and like it didn't hit as hard, I'm like, this is bad. I need to wait like 10 years. (laughs) (laughs) I think Uh that, yeah, I really like that approach. You know, you're keeping it special. In a sense, you're kind of doing the same kind of ritual thing that, um, that, that I was saying people do with vinyl. You have your own little ritual. It's just a different one. Yeah. I I specifically like to listen to music while I'm biking because that's like the most clear head ever is just like just zooming on, not thinking about anything, slamming into cars accidentally and getting hit. <laughs> don't you have like um well stay safe, buddy, but don't you have like don't you need to have kind of special headphones for that? I feel like when I've when I've done biking, I've gotten like a lot of noise from like my cords jangling or whatever. Um, that only happens a or couple like of time. Like I've only noticed that a couple of time. Most of the time, maybe I just got used to it and drown it out. Um, like I think that the wind going against the headphones adds a tiny bit to the experience. Like, and I have open headphones, so I can hear like a little bit of the cars and the uh, wind. Yeah, I should hope so. Stay safe, buddy and because you don't want to get honked at and then not notice you know that, it or something that is the worst thing is people put like car sounds or honking sounds in some music sometimes and i like look behind me i'm like what the oh that's awful God, yeah and like police sirens like uh revolution 909 that song starts with just like fucking police sirens yeah it's like like especially if i'm biking on the road and and i hear like just tiny little in the background like I'm like, oh, I'm going to get hit by a car right now. <laughs> Heart begins thumping really hard. Palms get sweaty, grips onto chest, falls into sewer. Didn't you listen to, like, Space Pony at, at uh, Escap Camp? And yes. And also, this is, this is opening up a big can of worms We're that I'm sure need to talk you about could. Escap Camp. Oh, you, you probably it's it's inevitable to talk if you about. So it. you don't. Have I, to I can. So no that's pressure, that's a really good. So powerful. That's a really that's so great and powerful. That uh, it's a really good topic. But I should just finish up the ex- other experiences. So like the yeah 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 the the one experience that's kind of just like a vibe I always have is most of the times that I was listening to this music was in high school. I would walk to and from school um an apartment that was like it was like a 30 minute walk to and from every day so and most of this was during the winter winter lasts pretty long in ontario like we still have winter way past like february it's like way past and it is extremely annoying to deal with i hate snow so much but Aside from like the inconvenience factor, if I'm not that particularly cold, it is a really good vibe. Like walking home uh, in the in the winter snow, like listening to Escap. I just yeah, I'm about to go home and not do any of my homework, you know, and <laughs> have not a care in the world. I'm just like solely to myself, immersed in this. And I think I also did that when I used to bike home at night when I worked the night shift at uh, the grocery store on my crappy Bluetooth Amazon headphones that would break (laughs) in one second. The most crazy, like, out-of-body type of moment with SCAP was a like this is like the most atmospheric listen i've ever had to music is at that same apartment in in north bay canada which is a town that is completely like by a long uh coast like there's basically just beaches everywhere there's just a huge body of water along the entire side of the town i lived a like five minute walk away from this little beach that had this this tiny little uh, I don't know what you would call it like a, a section where there's there's the beachfront and then you go to the left and you walk off this like concrete thing and go past some trees and then there's just this little lip that has its own like rocky shore 
kind of separate from the rest of the beach. And there was nobody there, which is rare because, like, you see a lot of trash, so it's, it's a popular spot for people to go. And, like, the first aspect of it was, like, these waves going on the rocks, like, constantly. Just enough to be, like, up close and personal, but not actually splashing you. And then, uh, it was actually, like, about to rain. It was just the exact moment, like, where you can tell it's going to rain that night. It's, like, super cloudy. And it's almost going to thunder. I love that feeling. But you're not wet. Like, it's so nice and it's, like, totally convenient. Uh, and it's, like, the perfect... Uh, it's not, like, too cold or too hot or anything. And I listened to the entirety of the Escap Collabs and Misc album. Like, that collection, that folder. And I didn't, like have any other time that I felt that immersed in, in anything ever. Like, I was just sitting there, like, basically meditating to the music, and, like, it was the most perfect moment ever. And then I... So that was, that was an hour, and then I walked back, and there was this, like, 60-year-old lady at the beach, and um, she, tar she started talking to me because there was geese there that, like, were... <laughs> quacking at me angrily <laughs> and then i ended up talking to that lady for three hours <laughs> oh my god what wow that's so cool yeah <laughs> that's amazing what an amazing memory you really like painted a such a vivid picture in my head about that whole experience yeah i miss that beach uh the old winter walks to Escap where you go home and don't do your homework is very relatable to me and I was taken back to that like I need to walk to Escap more like <laughs> people if you're listening go for a walk or run or bike to music you need to like be active and have like that experience not like all the time of course listen to music your own way but you should be active pretty often though <coughs> listen we just got we're in the hospital because <laughs> we eat 4700 million donuts and we don't walk anywhere we sit on computer chairs all day you need to start i thought walking. i could win the hot dog eating competition that was a competition wrong. i thought it was i didn't <laughs> you, I, I was wondering why you just ate like 50 hot dogs at once I thought you were doing it for the bit I don't know it's It was pretty hungry. funny like, when you If you're doing it for the vine yeah. But vine's dead so It was pretty funny when you like expanded To comical proportions And we could all see the hot dogs through your <laughs> stom Stomach Like Violet Beauregard <laughs> Yeah mm. all right. I remember. I love that. I remember that. Like there was a balloon inflating sound. We need to that. move on to the next question. Uh, I'm we losing are, my mind. We gotta talk about S story camp, or, S camp. So, Cause you have a yes, camp, camp S camp memory of listening. Tell us about so, camp S camp. Well, for so, those who are S uninformed, which is probably every single person down listening. the rabbit hole, ca camp S camp. Let's and I, go. I guess, I guess for some of this, you can't be too specific. I, I'm not going to like um, name right, yeah. the name of the camp or any people other yeah, than my friends. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, I love going down the rabbit hole. So, my good friend, you can bleep this if you want, Tin, <laughs> uh, Joe, my good friend Joe, he goes to a camp, and I think he's been there at least once, maybe twice, I don't remember. Uh, and this is someone from the server. Yes, yeah, from... Is my good friend from the Escap Joel server. from the Escap server, and it's a camp in America. That's all I'll say. What's a what? What is a America, America? Is a play on the word mare. It means the country oh. of the mare. Ooh, that's cool. Wow. And it so is. So you went there. It is filled with people of every single. <laughs> Moving on. And what's a camp exactly? Camp is a place where people come to worship the woods. 
Well, this particular That's camp true. was a nature camp. That's literally true. Nature camp. It's, it's a nature camp. So it wasn't like a dodgeball camp or, or like a shooting camp or a chainsaw camp. Okay. Or swim, swim. And camp. is it for? Is it for? It uh, is. It geriatrics? is for furries. <laughs> is it for? Is it for geriatrics? Is it for furries? Is it for different it's, types it's of bees? It's for. It's for bees. No, it's for anybody from the age of like, all the way down to eight for a specific group, up to sixteen for another specific group. But the majority is like ten to fourteen, and it's just a nature camp. You know, nothing. Nothing crazy. Uh, but Joe was like talking about it in the server and I think I was there and Alex was like, was another member, Alex is like, what if it's, what if I just went there to your camp? Like, <laughs> cause they're both going to through school for, so for the summer, it's like, oh, you could either work at like a hot dog stand or something, or just like play video games for the summer. Or you could go on this like crazy experience where you, do all of these things um and then like a week later it just turns out that like uh joe and toasterless and alex were all going to camp like insane like people from different states and different countries like rory's not in america i'm not in america and i was like well huh if rory's going and he's not from even from america i was like like What's stopping me from like, I'm just working a minimum wage by part time job, so I don't really have anything to lose. I want to quit anyways. So, uh, I went with them, and everything leading up to getting to camp was the most stressful thing ever. Trying to get a visa is nightmare fuel. Uh, but we eventually all got there at times separate, like. Roy was there a full week later because of a bunch of bullshit, but we all ended up being there. And the important thing is that we infiltrated a camp. <laughs> yeah, there were four <laughs> server members. Four S-Gappers in, a, in that, one That camp. met from different parts of the world just through S-Gap that all decided to work at the same, at the same camp. camp. <laughs> and we didn't like specifically say that, but... Like, uh, me and Alex and Rory, we were all like, oh, yeah, we met through Dro. And I think what we said is just like, oh, we met through, like, music. <laughs> so we didn't specifically say, like, yes, it's it's the uh, the niche the niche uh, pop Funko pr- protagonist <laughs> escape. Uh, I thought Toasterless did I don't remember. tell people that it was so good Well, not, like, during the interview, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, once he got there. <laughs> well, we kept... That's the... Okay, so, like, camp is so much to unpack. It's just, like, a million memories. Like, so whenever somebody asks me, I'm like, I don't want to talk about this. It's, like, so exhausting, you know? I Unless it was to, like, a huge audience, like a stadium. <laughs> um, well, you got a podcast. But it was just me and Alex, and that was, like, so awkward at first because Joel wasn't there until like the first week so we're there be without joe and we're just kind of like feeling the imposter syndrome so hard because we're from different states and we're here like kind of just because we know a friend not specifically because (laughs) like we're crazy like nature freaks from this specific state who have been here especially since like (laughs) a lot of the the counselors are just people who have been there as kids and that's the reason why they become counselors or because they're already something like a naturalist or in like child care or something there's only a rare few people who are like us who did it because you know why not and like or they they were feeling like a little lost so they wanted to try something new and it was definitely worth it because i can't say this about every camp or if the situation would be different like if i'm just going there like i would not go there if i wasn't gonna spend time with somebody i already knew but like that specific camp had such like an insane feeling of community when you live with somebody or not just when you work with somebody like if if you have a co-worker then 
at the end of the day, you can still go home. So you can just hate people, you know, you can just avoid people. But at camp, you're spending like every single hour with them. So you better like tolerate each other. You better like learn to love each other. And most people did, you know, it was, it was something that like, I don't know where else you can really go to get that experience unless you go live in like a commune or like be a set member on the fiddler on the roof or something and have share all these little activities together and, uh, formalities just like everybody does the same thing but not in a evil way <laughs> like 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 a like a cult or something <laughs> like just a legit <laughs> wholesome way that like everybody's in it for the like everybody's in it for the good of each other and the good of the the campers because um because it nobody's there just for like something they can exploit like money or something because like it is the lowest paying job you will ever work ever <laughs> like going by hour nobody is there for a reason other than just they want to be there you know mm -hmm. and it really was so accepting uh when we told them about like all of the reasons we're here and like all of our experiences because like we <laughs> Me and Alex tried to build it up to be like something to weigh on Joe because we were telling everybody like, you're not going to believe how we got here. <laughs> like, you're not going to believe why we're here. And then like all of them, when Joe arrived, all of them were like just like piling at all the casters like, how are you here? How, how are they here? What's the story? What's the story? And he was just like, oh, uh, we're all bronies. <laughs> Like, that's it there's no <laughs> and everybody's no like oh that's it an airplane from columbia <laughs> well another friend morgan always joked that it was from joe's bug dungeon dot net joe's we bug dungeon dot net <laughs> what is that what is yeah that? so um it, it was a crazy curve of like finding out which people were actually like interested in the topic and showing them things and finding out which people were not and like i th so i think that the very first time we played them any pony music was um uh, during the staff training you go on a overnight which is when you go away from the the normal camp place the site and you go out somewhere and just tent you just you just sleep in a tent for the night and First time we did that, I brought uh, this little speaker, which is this magical speaker that I got from uh, from what is it called? The Source or some electronic shop? I want to say Future Shop, but that's like a that's a that's a shop from like two thousand nine that's dead now. I've got this little speaker right here. I'm holding that I bought to bring there, and I didn't really know if it would be worth it, but it turned out being like the most like religious artifact to ever have, having this speaker and having <laughs> the ability to play music like relatively loudly at any time and just share it with people. It's the, uh, this is the head rush model number eight Oh eight four one eight two or something. <laughs> nice speakers that <laughs> and Dude. it's just like this shitty <laughs> off-brand speaker that was like 60 canadian dollars and i brought it and we listened to <laughs> we played uh for the boys for the boys group of counselors when we uh went to sleep over at the tent uh while we we're cooking hot dogs or by the fire we played um sunshine and celery stalks and like me and alex got up and something. we're like and we're like oh this is brilliant like me and alex specifically like kind of came to realize how like amazing that song is that and trixie's good side from pinkie pie oh, square yeah. oh, and yeah. just like how simple and pure it is 
in every way. And like, because I don't know if I've talked to him uh, about that song much, but like, we listened to it so many times at camp. Like, it was literally, it felt like we were kids again, because when you're young, you can do that way more. You can just watch or listen to the same thing over and over and over again you know and it doesn't get old it's like just your favorite thing and we played it for them and one of the guys was that like we never really clicked with not like we didn't like him but it was just like i don't know um wasn't on board with everything like the most he was like the next day after we listened to it he was just like uh, they played pony music, and it was uh, disturbing, <laughs> <laughs> which I don't get at all. It's just like what? It's just like like fun. I don't know. Good, good, good giggly music makes you feel warm on the inside. Um, and but eventually, like we built it up so much that somebody who was more interested in music like Morgan, our friend, who we met there, who, yeah, so he's not an escapper. He just goes to that camp. Eventually, when Joe finally came, we were using the speaker to listen to stuff like Dungeon Synth, which, by the way, is just like Lord of the Rings, Hobbit music. Uh, and then we're like, oh, Some we got to listen to Space Pony. We're like trying to think of something that would be like really good for this atmosphere. And we're like... Okay, this is a specific part of the country where there's no pollution because everybody just like lives out back, you know. So <laughs> there's no like light pollution. So we gotta like watch the stars and listen to Space Pony. So we went out to the the waterfront where like the beach areas. We just sat there and listened to the entirety of Space Pony and then a couple other songs, and it was pretty brilliant. That ended up leaving an impact, I think, on uh, Morgan because he has mentioned multiple times that he thinks that song is pretty like standout, brilliant. I think. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's a lot easier to have a deep appreciation for a song if you have a moment as wonderful as that. Like that, I can't imagine how beautiful that would be. Like just being there with everyone. Maybe you weren't there with like literally everyone for that space pony listen, but just being there at camp brought there by Escap listening to his stuff, just looking at the stars. What a perfect moment. Yeah. It's like th- that that is the most crazy thing. It's like the places it brings us, you know? Yeah. Like I don't really have a reason so to fucking cool to, to like travel outside of Canada <laughs> besides this, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Like, what it really is the draw? Am I gonna see the new Big Tooth uh, concert? <laughs> um, but there is another moment of like Escap listening that I need to work my way up to a little bit. That is pretty similar to what we just uh, went on. Uh, a particularly special moment was um, session two. So how the camp works is that. You have multiple sessions, and uh, you could either move or request to be moved or stay in the same um, uh, group, like age group, with the kids. The craziest aspect, maybe, is that usually the ratio of counselors to campers is like one to six or seven. So if you have three counselors, you may get like 20 or 25 campers. This one, um, they literally messed it up. They had a, like an error on the site. So the people who were supposed to uh, be just like on the waiting list to get into this group of uh, of the like 15 and 16 year olds, I think they were, that group, on the site, it didn't put them on the waiting list. It just accept, accepted them all. So what might have been like a group supposed to be a group of 20 or less i think wow turned out to be 37 campers oh my god and for some reason oh my gosh they only put three camper uh counselors to that group so that's a it's a ratio of one to 12.3 
Um, what? Any other group, I think it would have been like a nightmare, and it kind of was at times. But this just happened to be like a super great group of kids. Like it was just awesome. Mm. Like they were just like, for the most part, okay, I will say um, that they had like the right spirit, and they were like willing to do things, and they were like mature enough to to do things and you just had to guide them along a little bit. So it's not like if you had a group of 10 year olds, you're like constantly worrying about they're going to throw rocks at each other or like fall off a cliff or something <laughs> or like go wander. Um, and you can't get them to like w just walk into a straight line and like, you know, do roll call. But this one, it was way easier than it should have been to do roll call for 37 people. Just because I, I guess they were like, probably more mature than i guess i would expect them to be and there was not like there wasn't really any like just you know people who didn't want to be there they they're old enough so that they can decide to be there they're not just put there by their parents so everybody who was there wanted to be there and they were like really well intent intentioned you know do you know that uh kids happen to like music Gross. Those, those Darsh, <laughs> Darsh Garn kids, teenagers what? like the music, you know? What? So we really like got on their good side by being able to play music. <laughs> like um, we were able to do requests a couple times, you know, like as long as they're safe. Um, and so like, and then we some eventually are down the way. We got into how me and Joe, like, how we got to camp and how we know each other. So I was just in my cabin with the, like, five or so kids that you get in each cabin that you have to sleep in every night. And um, I start talking about it. And then I'm like, oh, I have to open up this can of worms. And then one of them... <laughs> Just starts writing down notes in his notebook. He's like, I gotta write this down. So I end up like giving a an entire lecture about like SCAP and the community and such. Um and like adjacent artists and the whole community, whatever. Um, a lot more some stuff I missed, some stuff I probably could have left out, but I just chose to talk about. And I didn't even realize he was writing down notes. Like and then Somebody, I think, like, Joe took a picture of the notes and sent it later. And it was so funny to see, like, that, like, he almost misspelled every single thing that I'd say that was, like, <laughs> like a like a proper noun, like, like, a, like, Pinkie Pie Swear or something. Like, I, I think he wrote down, uh, like, the, Pinkie's Pie Wear or something. Or <laughs> The best one for, was SCAP, like, they, they wrote down... E S C A P S cap. <laughs> like he never S asked. S cap. Me. He just like wrote it down. <laughs> yeah, he just made his own spelling. It was wonderful. <laughs> like, I, I think I said something about um, uh, Debbie McCallan, and he wrote Debbie McCallan. <laughs> yeah, Debbie. <laughs> Little Debbie McCallan. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, that was crazy to see that, like, he basically wrote his own, like, thesis or something off of me with with this. Um, and he was very interested when I, when I was talking out specifically an interest I had to say, which was the, I was talking about the, the kind of cycle of inspiration um, and creation that comes in a community like this. I talked about from from start to beginning how something like Never 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 song would be, um, which I explained what the song was. And so the like going to the very start of it, very start of the song, um, the inspiration comes from uh like not even just My Little Pony G four, it would come from like all the way back to the original My Little Pony cartoon which inspired lauren foss to make her own version when she was given the opportunity using like what she imagined as a kid so and then when they made that show 
just one scene in it, the, uh, was it Party of One episode, was something that inspired somebody to make the twisted fanfic cupcakes, like, out of their own weird ideas, you know? And then that fanfic inspired a person to make a Tumblr blog, and then that Tumblr blog inspired a person to make the song, the SCAP song. So, like, how many layers of something, like, completely different in, like, tone or uh, the way that it's executed is is in this line of, like, start to finish where we get something so completely different of, like, the original My Little Pony series in the 80s till the escap song which has like chainsaws and shit in it (laughs) yeah i mean i guess it is a lot to explain if someone is kind of removed from it yeah and (laughs) that's a great way of tracking it down though i mean yeah that's and the original my little pony series was inspired by my pretty pony and that was inspired by uh a real pony in real life. But <laughs> <laughs> we could go all day. But um, we had like a lot of great moments uh, sharing music with them or playing their own music and hearing it and like dancing to it. And uh, we did a little safe moshing. We didn't, we were, we, we allowed them to mosh when the other <laughs> higher ups weren't looking and we made sure it was safe. <laughs> There was a specific a really favorite song called Get Crunk, <laughs> which is just like this <laughs> proto screamo try hard song that just is like so stupid. And I think that was another group that loved like Sunshine and Celery Stocks as well. Uh, we showed them a lot of SCAP music. And on uh, the final night, we listened, we like handpicked a bunch of songs that would really fit this occasion of like, it's the final night with these kids who have all like bonded with each other. And we've kind of bonded with them too, a little bit as well. For two weeks, it was a long session of 37 different people trying to like know who each person is and like actually know their names, you know, and talk to that many amount of people. And we did the same thing. We went over... And we had to be quiet, so we couldn't do this, like, anywhere except the parking lot. We were allowed permission to walk over to the parking lot of the camp and just lay down on the floor and look at the stars. And we listened to Space Pony again with them and some other songs. Uh, I don't remember. I think I put some of Face Explodey on as well. People came to Joe after that night and said that, like, a lot of them cried during it. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so wild. Oh my god. <sighs> I hope they grow up to be their phantom creators of their own. Yeah. <laughs> doing what whatever's popular, like Friday night yeah, funkin' five or nights something. At funkin'. Doing anything. Anything at all. I hope there's some really cool phantom stuff in the future. I hope that they make Danny Phantom music. <laughs> Yeah, because you, you seem to, like, you and everyone else there seem to put a lot yeah, of effort that, into, that does like, bum, making it fun for them. You when you, like, go full force, like, trying to be passionate so that you'll bring yeah. it out of other people and they're just, like, too cool for it, you know? It's like, you're at camp, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just have fun. <coughs> um, but they had like, the opposite. They had kids that were, like, super interested in everything and were like always full of energy and like passion and uh apparently there was a power line hike changed my life chant based off of a, a hike that they went on and they listened to sunshine and cellar stocks and like frolicked in the <laughs> field to it <laughs> oh, that's so cool yeah and i think that they list that group of kids listened to that song like a couple dozen so- times <laughs> Like, they had a final dance party where they all got glow sticks and started dancing at the night. And then 
while they were waiting in the parking lot to get picked up by their parents, they played it again and started dancing to it. You know, I think... I went to the Camp Escap rave and all I got was COVID. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's just like a testament to how wonderful and just easy to understand how good these some of these songs are like these like pinky five swear songs and some of these escap songs are just so like i feel like if you don't have the context of oh it's my little pony like if you just listen to the song as like a bop or like something to dance to and something to feel like i feel like it's so easy to get it and it's just like you said like the pinky five swear stuff is just so fucking pure like it's just it's 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 good for the soul <laughs> everyone likes it yeah it's it's got good it's vibes. funny you're putting these random ass kids on <laughs> these like old classic brody yeah songs. the funniest thing is when i would play it and somebody was like this sounds like uh this sounds like friday night funkin <laughs> Whoa. And i'd be like you know technically i guess you're right <laughs> maybe i need to listen to friday night funkin Hey, some of the Friday Night Funkin' songs they are do, they do good. go like, off, and like, <laughs> I I don't play it, but I'm like, you know what? This is this is cool. I will say it is cool. You can see why they yeah. like it. It's it's pretty good. I think that is one of the way more tolerable things. It's Friday Night Friday Night Funkin' because it's just like, it is cool, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so if you had to like wrap up camp how would you how would you do you have any lingering important thoughts or did you um you the water takeaways? tasted like sulfur because it had sulfur in it <laughs> did you like that yeah no i didn't like it no camp uh, too bad. camp was a uh, crazy it's like a one in a lifetime thing like i don't think we'll ever have that type of experience again you know uh, yeah the the fact that it was like four people from our server you know like four escap phantom people who yeah. were already really good friends like doing something like that like just being camp counselors together yeah is like so wild to me you know like it kind of does seem like it i mean it almost seems like down the rabbit hole territory you know like we we've made jokes about it just this something on the internet becoming that real or whatever obviously it's like it's not negative or whatever there's nothing freaky to be talking about it just like camp counselors but playing pony music but it's still like so (laughs) just crazy to think that i mean yeah that like something so virtual became so real like that oh my god really cool i'm really happy you had that experience there's just so much to talk about that i literally forget like it's just it was literally months of being there like all the time, every single day, and something new happened. But I think two things I forgot to mention is um, we had um, like some other like uh, counselors in training or campers who were like hardcore bronies. Oh, I did. I even forgot we did a mo- movie night with the the same group of the fifteen six year olds where we watched My Little Pony episodes, like curated four of like the best episodes, thirty seven of them in the nature room with the projector it was insane <laughs> <laughs> and then didn't didn't wow. they watch like the g5 movie and they watched the g5 well. movie and they were like this sucks <laughs> and they literally were like what is this <laughs> that's so funny yeah. <laughs> uh and also P- people approaching the target demographic <laughs> <laughs> also i did a uh learned how to draw a pony with toasterless and and uh and another counselor in training um oh that's awesome yeah we did it and like we got a good turnout of like uh 20 people each session i think and i showed them kind of just like my show more slightly like show accurate way but the other person the counselor in training and rory they had like their own unique ways and that was awesome like counselor in training really cool and i got to keep some of the drawings because the kids were just like i don't want it i don't want to keep this drawing i don't care (laughs) so i kept them good souvenirs yeah and the last thing is i got to teach some of them how to use fl studio (laughs) oh my god yeah i forgot about that so we like (laughs) you had like a session or something we got on the speakers on my laptop we made mashups and like 
like with one group we made the clown music that was like clown <laughs> beat and because we would wake them up with clown music with the big speaker every morning or like uh, goosebumps dubstep <laughs> and the funniest one i still think is that we got the safe safe version of uh baby keem uh family not family ties uh range brothers range brothers. and we just put cartoon <laughs> sound effects over it and i Amazing. and i thought that like kids of any age would hear it because like it's just that popular but kids didn't hear it so like um so now kids know about Range Brothers because I played the safe version. <laughs> and then like for like the week later, you're hearing kids being like, <laughs> like, uh, what they say? Beat yeah, it up. Beat him up. Beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> beat him up. <laughs> top of the morning. Top of the morning. So many kids were going top of the morning. Top of the morning. <laughs> All the stories are just so surreal, like out of a dream or something. It's crazy. I will say the final wrap up, I think, for campus that this was specifically very special, but um, the uh, maybe just camps in general are kind of like this. I think the vibe is something that I've kind of had a yearning for like wanting something like this but um there's very hard it's very hard to find it anywhere is a sense of collaboration with 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 people and working in it together in a way that is completely untouched by all of the like toxicities of maybe like a regular workplace like you know working on a project with a bunch of people um if <laughs> like like in a company i don't know for like to make a movie or something like it's so just stupid so so much of it and it doesn't ever really feel like people are there for the right reason or they're like passionate in the same way that you are you know but in this little like um in this one like scenario it's like everybody's there and they all realize that like they have to put everything into this to, yeah like, make it special totally i feel <laughs> that you make it special every time I love that. It's a little reference to the full Milo Point opening, guys. You can listen to it on YouTube and YouTube Premium. And you, if you guys want, this like <laughs> like this contest, you can listen to it on 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 Spotify, and you can click the link. We got shirts, we got escape hoodies, we got escape cups, we got escape uh, bongs, we got weed paper. We got flasks. We got laser print, laser printed pop funkos. We got three D printed. I actually lied. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Escap Nation. We don't have any of those things. All that we have is a sticker in the Discord. We just have a sticker in the Discord. If you get interviewed, and that's all. That's it. Yeah. That's all you get. Yeah. If you want the Escap hoodie, go to <laughs> Waffles. His address is five fifty eight. <laughs> <laughs> well what do y'all think should we should think we wrap good. it up or, or do we need to go yeah <laughs> one last yeah we, we should have a last, last question? question um i think um yeah why are you not over SCAP? It's been you. You started. You started listening in 2013. What's the deal? I just haven't found anything that's up to the same standards. Facts. Right on. Right on. Good answer. Facts. Good, night. Good answer. Here's my lullaby from Ooh, DJ here we go. Sleepy Hooves. DJ Sleepy Hooves make us so sleepy. The night. The night is long. The night is not short. You're wearing pants or maybe jorts. It's time to go to bed. Lay your sleepy, heapy head.
take off your brown hat and have a sat on the chair. Eat a nice pear. Let down your hair. Bring out the mare. It's time for dreams. You are going to go there. Bobby and I did that at the exact same time. I just, on record, same joke. That was beautiful, Bulk. Thank you so much. <laughs> and good night, Escape Nation! Good night, good night everypony. Thank, Thank you, you, Bulk. See you next podcast. Good Goodbye. night, every pony. See you next Goodbye. podcast. Bye. Bye. Bye.